assalamu alaikum students today we will discuss about the classification of steel in the previous lecture we have discussed iron iron carbide diagram and uh, construction of phase diagram our learning objectives are classification of steel with respect to method of uh, manufacture classification of steel with respect to chemical composition identification of steel when we are provided several types of standards effect of uh, small quantities of other elements on iron iron carbide what is iron iron is a chemical element it is strong hard heavy gray metal iron is produced by melting iron ore and removing impurities from iron ores there are three types of iron pig iron wrought iron cast iron what is steel steel is simply a purer form of iron with lower carbon content steel can be produced from molten iron ore with blast of air electric furnace bessemer furnace and some other uh, processes so in this lecture we will discuss the production of iron and production of steel we will discuss some basic processes of steel processing including the blast of air electric furnace and bessemer furnace uh, the we will discuss some the types of iron and production of iron processes uh, and the classification and identification of steel and the identification of steel by the chemical composition as well what is pig iron basic raw iron is called pig iron because it's uh, it is produced in the form of uh, chunky molded blocks known as pigs pig iron is made by heating in iron ore rich in iron oxide in a blast furnace what is cast iron cast iron is simply liquid iron that has been cast uh, poured into a mold and allowed to cool and uh, uh, harden to form a finished structural shape such as pipe gear a big girder from an iron bridge uh, for an iron bridge what is wrought iron wrought iron is a very uh, different material made by mixing liquid iron with the, some slag the result is an iron alloy with a much lower carbon content wrought iron is softer than cast iron and much less tough iron ores in pakistan iron ore is found in various regions of pakistan including nokondi uh, chenot and uh, the largest one is in kalaba where less than 42% quality can be found uh, iron ores can also be found in the uh, haripur some sites are uh, in haripur in other northern areas of pakistan as well uh, at 11 february 2015 the reservoirs were found in uh, chinyot uh, around 160 kilometers uh, northwest of lahore types of iron ores there are Mm, four types of iron ores 
magnetite, hematite, lemonite, siderite. Magnetite, the main, the, sorry, magnetite, the main uh, iron bearing mineral of magnetite is a tri iron tetraoxide and its chemical formula is Fe3O4. The theoretical iron content is 72.4%. Uh, the appearance color is usually carbon black uh, so, or slightly light blue. Uh, metallic luster streaks color appearing on the board when the surface is uneven on the white uh, proclaim plate commonly known as green mine hematite hematite refers to a ferric oxide containing no crystal water and its chemical formula is fe2o3 iron oxide the pure hematite theoretical iron content is 70% its appearance is uh, from red light gray sometimes black and uh, strips uh, are dark red commonly known as red mine magnetite is uh, known as uh, green mine while uh, hematite is known as uh, commonly known as red mine lemonite Lemonite is ferric, ferric oxide containing crystal water and uh, the chemical formula can be expressed by FMFE2O3NH2O. It is uh, actually composed of mixture of uh, geotide FE2O3H2O, uh, water uh, needle iron or iron oxide and mud iron hydroxide and mud siderite siderite is an iron carbonate with the chemical formula FeCO3 iron carbonate a uh, theoretical iron content of 48.2% uh, uh, FeO content uh, of 62.1% and carbon dioxide is 30 Seven point nine percent. Common in uh, it is common in nature and is hard and dense. Siderite. The appearance of color is gray and yellow brown. Production of iron ores. Iron ore must contain at least twenty percent iron. Iron ore must contain at least 20% iron. Iron ore is dug out of the ground from the deep mine underground. Iron ore rocks are separated from other material. The ore is crushed into fine powder mixed with water making a slurry. These pro this process is important process first uh, iron ores are separated and then crushed and then uh, crushed into fine powder mixed with water making slurry vertical shaft furnace called the blast furnace uh, this slurry the crushed uh, and then the slurry is uh, put into vertical shaft furnace called a blast furnace iron ore coke and limestone are charged in the blast furnace furnace iron ore coke limestone and slurry are put all together to charge the uh, uh, and these materials are charged hot air is pumped into bottom of the furnace limestone attracts impurities that's why limestone is added a slag forms and floats on the top of the molten iron and can be removed easily clay is added to the slurry and the mixture shaped into pellets uh, ba bagged forming is a hard forming a hard shell 
the pellets are sent to a steel mill in order to extract the iron which is normally uh, converted into steel. Production of iron. This is uh, the generalized schematic diagram of the uh, blast furnace. Production of iron from its ore, iron ore. In industry, this is carried out in a blast furnace. This is the schematic diagram of the blast furnace. Normally, some reactions takes place. Carbon monoxide removes oxygen from iron ore. That's why uh, iron. The reaction is this one. The iron is removed and carbon dioxide is removed. Carbon dioxide reacts with carbon to form carbon monoxide, and this reaction to carbon monoxide is made. Coke burns in the blast of hot air to form carbon dioxide. So carbon and oxygen are added, and carbon dioxide is made. So at the bottom, mol molten iron is removed and molten slag is removed in the bottom uh, preheated air is uh, fed into the blast furnace through these uh, uh, ducts uh, waste gases are removed from here and uh, the coke and other things are added over here method of manufacture there are actually several methods of manufacturing of steel. There are some common method, method of uh, manufacturing of steel. One of this is uh, uh, bessemer steel, open hearth steel, electric furnace steel, and crucible steel. We will define this these methods one by one. Bessemer process. This is the schematic diagram of the Bessemer process. The Bessemer process was the first inexpensive and industrial process for the mass production of steel from molten pig iron before the development of a open hearth furnace the key principle is the removal of impurities from the iron by oxidation with air being blown uh, through the molten iron the this is the refractory lining surrounded by uh, bricks fire bricks and uh, the the air is passed from this way these holes and molten pig is over here the the furnace is rotated through these axes so that the molten pig iron is rotated and impurities are removed for the uh, complete detail, please follow this link, the YouTube link. Stainless steel, steel type Bessemer converter is used, which is surrounded by fire bricks to resist the heat. These are the refractory lining. These are the. This is surrounded. Open hearth steel. This is the schematic diagram of the upper open hearth steel. The open hearth furnace OHF uses the heat of combustion of gaseous or liquid fuels to convert a charge of scrape and liquid blast furnace blast furnace iron to liquid steel. The high flame temperature required for melting is obtained by preheating the combustion air 
and preheated chamber sometimes the fuel gas the high flame temperature required for molting is obtained by preheating the combustion air in the preheated chamber sometimes the fuel gas main the hearth the main furnace is this one uh, this is the main furnace where gas and air enter to these uh, hot air enter through the the these tubes these walls from point b and enter the furnace at the exit at point c this is the molten pig iron and this is being circulated the the exit this is the exit of the hot gas in air the gases in air it is used for making steel from scrap iron and iron ore actually scrap iron and iron ore are put uh, in the furnace and hot air gases are entered through these chambers it operates on preheated fuel gas and air limestone is used as a flux electric furnace steel making process an electric furnace is a furnace that heats charged material by means of electric arc its capacity start, starts from 1 ton to 400 ton it uses an arc type electric furnace and comprises the steps of number one putting the scrap iron into the arc type electric furnace and inserting a movable electrode into the electric furnace second step is after that once the uh, the scrap iron is put into the uh, arc type electric furnace and uh, a movable electrode are inserted uh, in the electric furnace then the second step uh, the electrode are lowered lowering the electrode while conducting electric current to the electrode and melting the scrap is the second process for uh, complete detail please follow this uh, youtube link this is the schematic diagram of electric arc furnace two kind two kinds of electric current may be used in electric arc furnaces direct current alternating current three phase alternating current electric arc uh, furnace with graphite electrodes are commonly used in steel making these are the electrodes the furnace consists of a spherical hearth which is at the bottom this one is the spherical hearth cylindrical shell cylindrical uh, shell and a swinging water cooled dome shaped roof swinging water cooled dome shaped roof the roof has three holes for consumable graphite electrodes held by clamping mechanism the clamping mechanism so sometimes over here this is the clamping mechanism the other hole is this one the mechanism provides independent uh, independent lifting and lowering of each electrode so uh, over here a mechanism is built to lift and lower the electrodes the water cooled uh, uh, water cooled the water cooled electrode holders serve also as contacts for transmitting electric current supplied by water cooled cables tubes the electrodes and the scrape form the star connection of three phase current in which the scrape is common junction the furnace is mounted on a tilted mechanism 
for tapping the molten steel through a tape hole with a pour spout located on the back of the side of the shell. this is the spout mm. crucible steel this is very old method and uh, steel is made by melting pig iron cast iron iron and sometimes uh, steel often along with sand glass ashes and other fluxes in a crucible a mixture of sand glass ashes and other other fluxes is uh, uh, they are put together with the melting pig iron in ancient times steel and iron were impossible to melt using charcoal or coal fires which could not produce temperatures uh, temperature high enough crucible steel of this type was produced in south and central asia during the medieval era this generally produced a very hard steel but also a composite steel that was inhomogeneous consisting of a very high carbon steel formerly the pig iron and low carbon steel formerly the wrought iron the production of steel is generally there are several thousand types of uh, steel when they are uh, uh, there is a mixture of another uh, element uh, let's suppose carbon and when carbon at different percentage or added uh, carbon at different percentages added with the uh, pig iron we can get the different varieties of steel uh, with respect to ductility strength and uh, other applications and not only ca carbon but some other allying elements are also added to increase the strength and ductility uh, of uh, the substance of uh, of the steel so they are used uh, in many applications but generally we can categorize one of the three basic families the stainless steel uh, tool steel mild or low carbon steel sometimes we can in, in most of the books uh, we can categorize that in low carbon steel high carbon steel high carbon steel uh, is categorized in to further two types of steel stainless steels and tool steels mild steels are simple steel with very few elementary uh, elemental additives uh, like uh, carbon and manganese or chromium tool steels are tailored for specific properties using multiple additives stainless steels have very large concentrations of one or two elements carbon is perhaps the more most uh, critic critical uh, chemical additive carbon since uh, it directly determines the hardenability of steel mild steels typically contain less than 1% carbon by mass tool steels can contain up to 15% or more carbon as do stainless steels stainless steels contain up to 20% chromium and relatively high concentrations of nickel chemicals not typically added to mild uh, or tool steel Tool steels can contain multiple additives in trace amounts or in higher concentrations. These elements determine specific physical and mechanical properties. Assalamu alaikum students. In this lecture we will discuss about the classification of steel by the chemical composition. Alloy steel. What is alloying? Changing chemical compositions of steel by adding elements with the purpose to improve its properties as compared to the plain carbon steel. We can change the chemical composition of steel by adding elements such as carbon 
like previously we have added carbon with different percentage with respect to its weight to the and uh, have discussed in the iron iron carbide diagram so we can change uh, the chemical composition of the steel by adding different elements we can also add manganese and chromium chromium to improve its properties such as uh, ductility hardness stiffness uh, uh, as compared to the plain carbon steel alloy steels or or uh, irons where other elements besides carbon can be added to the iron to improve its uh, mechanical properties uh, such as increase strength hardness uh, toughness for a given classification of metal alloys metal alloys can be classified into mainly two types one is ferrous alloys the other is uh, non ferrous alloys ferrous alloys can be further we are uh, not interested uh, in uh, non ferrous alloys we are interested in ferrous alloys uh, in order to classify the steel uh, into its uh, different parts so ferrous alloys uh, can further be uh, divided into two types of uh, cast iron and steels we have discussed the uh, with respect to cast iron and steels are differentiated with uh, from each other with respect to different par, uh, uh, carbon uh, uh, percentage cast iron in pure form is called uh, ingot iron uh, with no carbon at all uh, with uh, some uh, uh, other uh, small proportions of other elements uh, cast iron can also we can also call it white white iron or gray iron steel uh, ferrous can first uh, ferrous alloys can be divided into two parts so cast iron and, st and steel uh, and then steel can further be categorized into three types uh, two types of so low alloy we can also call it plain carbon steel and a high alloy low alloy can further be categorized into three parts low carbon steel medium carbon steel uh, and high carbon steel low carbon steel uh, are used for high strength uh, they are uh, called low alloy medium ca uh, carbon uh, steel are heat treatable high carbon steel ca we can also uh, form uh, we can also call it tool steel uh, which is also a part of a uh, high alloy high alloy uh, we can make a uh, stainless steel from high alloy high, uh, stainless steel is one of the example of the high alloy similarly to tool steel sometimes we can also call it uh, in, uh, we can consider it in the category of high alloy uh, with respect to carbon percentage low carbon steel or low alloy uh, uh, low carbon steel uh, carbon percentage is less than 0.25 percent for medium car uh, uh, carbon steel the carbon percentage is between 0.25 to 0.6 percent by weight for high carbon steel the percentage is between 0.6 to 1.4 percent by weight In this slide, the classification of steels um, is distributed into low alloy and high alloy, while low alloy is further distributed into low carbon, medium carbon, high carbon. We have previously discussed the percentage of carbon in low carbon, medium and high carbon. But uh, the, some other elements when they are added, they are also discussed and the uh, ASTM number is also discussed in this slide so that we can recognize the standard of uh, specific alloy, specific steel. Uh, if we start from the low carbon steel, the, in low carbon steel, any external uh, in uh, uh, low carbon steel. Uh, over here, if we see that uh, the in front of the name. In 
different to the name in plain carbon steel below this any external element substance is not used only uh, uh, carbon is used while for high strength copper vanadium nickel molybdenum they are used in is uh, uh, additive elements uh, with some specific uh, percentage for the high strength uh, low carbon steel for medium carbon steel in plain carbon steel uh, no any external metal other than carbon is used while for heat treatable for heat treatable uh, medium carbon steel chromium nickel and molybdenum mul is used similarly for the specification for the high alloy and stainless steel for stainless steel in order to increase the toughness chromium nickel and molybdenum with some per percentages are also used the specification names 1010 is shown uh, while uh, we will discuss this uh, later on that what does it mean one is stands for what similarly zero stands for what the last two digits 10 st st stands for what uh, similarly a633 is the specification name for the high strength low carbon steel when copper vanadium and nickel and molybdenum elements are used the applications so the plain carbon steel is used in automobile for construction works structure and sheet metals uh, while high strength um, low carbon steel the most common alloy elements which are added in the low alloy steels in the category of low alloy steel or uh, some uh, have high alloy steels the additive elements are chromium nickel molybdenum vanadium tungsten cobalt boron and copper the percentages uh, for the manganese for, for the alloy steels in general this must be uh, the manganese percentage 1.65 percent while uh, uh, manganese should be less than 1.65 percent similarly silicon should be less than 0.60 percent by weight uh, copper is, uh, is uh, should be less than 0.60 percent by weight but uh, in additional tables are provided some additional tables are provided in which the proper percentage of in composition are mentioned in low carbon steel the we have already discussed about the composition the comp composition for carbon by weight it is less than 0 0.25 percent uh, to 0 0.3 uh, less than 0 0.25 to 0 0.3 for uh, uh, 30 percent the microstructure look like uh, the microstructure uh, is uh, like uh, perlite and ferrite the properties the they are relatively soft and weak but possesses high ductility and toughness other features are machinable and weldable not responsive to heat treatment uh, the plain for the plain carbon steel they have high strength they are uh, high strength low alloys steel uh, up to 10% of aligning elements such as manganese, chromium, copper, vanadium, nickel and molybdenum can be strengthened by heat treatment. <coughs> Applications of the low carbon steel, they are used in art, automobile body parts, components, structural shapes, sheets etc. The doors of the automobile, uh, the seamless tubes. Similarly, they are used for the manufacturing of uh, wire, rod, nails, concrete, reinforcement bars. Medium carbon steel, the composition is between 0.25 to 0.6% by weight. For low carbon steel, the composition is below 0.25% 
um, carbon by weight and they can be heat treated and the process is uh, the uh, processes uh, for heat treatment which are used are austenizing quenching and tempering the microstructure is typically tempered martensite for low carbon steel the microstructure was perlite and ferrite the processing increasing the carbon content to approximately 0.5 percent with an accompanying increase in manganese allows medium carbon steel to be used in quenched and tempered condition the medium uh, carbon steel have low hardenability properties they are stronger than low carbon steel but inexpensive of ductility and the applications of the medium carbon steel the, they are used for coupling forging gears crankshaft other high strength structural components steels steel uh, in the 0.4 to 0 0.60 car uh, percentage by weight of carbon range are also used for rails railway uh, wheels and rail axles i will repeat steels in the 0.40 to 0.6 percent carbon by weight they are also used for rail railways wheels and rail axles furthermore they are used with the gears uh, for the gear uh, couplings rail uh, railroad wheels uh, axles and uh, uh, some other uh, the high carbon steel the range for the high carbon steel is between 0.60 to 1 percent by weight of carbon with manganese contents ranging from 0.30 to 0.90 percent manganese ultra high carbon steels are experimental alloys containing 1.25 to 2 percent carbon these steels are thermomechanically processed to produce microstructures that consist of ultra fine pro eutectite carbide particles high carbon steel applications high carbon steels are used for the spring uh, forging dies railroads uh, springs uh, hammers uh, because uh, they are very tough they are used for saws for the manufacturing of saws uh, and uh, uh, cylinder lining high alloy steels stainless steel is one example of the high alloy steels the primary alloying element is chromium the percentage of chromium by weight is greater than or equal to 11 percent by weight they are highly resist and they have highly resistance to corrosion uh, actually nickel and melbodinum additions they increase the corrosion resistance a property of great importance is the ability of alloying elements to promote the formation of a certain phase or to stabilize it these elements are grouped as three major classes austenite farming ferrite farming carbide farming tool steels are also considered in the under the category of high alloy steels they provide necessary hardness with the simpler heat treatment and retain this hardness at high temperature the primary alloying elements are molybdenum and chromium the examples for the high alloy steels are high stainless steel turning machine tools high carbon tool steels drill bit milling tools punches sub assalamu alaikum students in this lecture we will discuss the effect of alloying elements 
and identification of steel our learning objectives are how to identify type of steel and chemical composition and what is the effect of the alloying elements on the steel <coughs> First we want to discuss the effects of uh, alloying elements on steel. Manganese is also one of the <coughs> alloying element of the steel. Manganese contributes to strength and hardness. It is dependent upon the carbon content. Increasing the manganese content decreases the ductility and weldability. Manganese has significant effect on the hardenability of steel. Phosphorus. Phosphorus increases strength and hardness and decreases ductility and notch impact toughness of steel. The adverse effects on ductility and toughness are greater in quenched and tempered high carbon steels. Sulfur. Sulfur decreases ductility and increasing hardness uh, and brittleness. The notch impact toughness, uh, especially in the tra uh, transverse direction. Weldability decreases and increases uh, uh, decreases with the increasing sul uh, sulfur content. Sulfur is found primarily in the form of sulfide inclusions silicon silicon is one of the principal deoxidizers and steel making silicon is less effective than manganese in increasing is roll strength and hardness in low carbon steel silicon is generally uh, de uh, detriment detrimental to surface quality copper copper in sig is significant in significant amounts is detrimental to hard working steels copper can be detrimental to surface quality copper is beneficial to atmospheric corrosion resistance when present in amounts exceeding 0.2 percent by weight nickel nickel is ferrite strength uh, strengthener nickel does not form carbides in steel it remains in the solution in ferrite strengthening and toughening the ferrite phase nickel increases the hardenability impact strength of the steel Molybdenum increases the hardenability of steel. It enhances the creep strength of low alloy steels at elevated temperature. Identification. This method indicates by means of a numbering system. This is one of the most popular method of classification. The steel some specifications represent the results of a cooperative effort, uh, effort of American Iron and Steel Institute AISI and the Society of Automotive Engineers SAE in a simplification program aimed at the greater efficiency in meeting the steel needs of the American industry. Now how can we identify the specifications or the composition of steel with a standard name AISI 2520 for steel or what is the meaning of the symbol AISI 2520 for steel this is the generalized method for the identification of the four numbers the first digit of the four or five na uh, four or five for uh, numeral designation indicates the type to which steel belongs the thus one indicates a carbon steel 
two for the nickel steel, three a nickel chromium steel. The first four digit uh, of four or five numeral designation indicates the type to which uh, the steel belongs. The first four digit. Thus, one indicates a carbon steel, two a nickel steel, three a nickel chromium steel. In case of simple alloy steels, the second digit indicates the approximate percentage of the predominant alloying uh, element. Uh, the last two or three digits usually indicate the mean of carbon content divided by 100. Thus, the symbol 2520 indicates a nickel steel because we have already discussed two for the nickel steel. The first digit uh, indicates the main aligning element. Nickel steel indicates a nickel steel of approximately 5% nickel. 2 is for the name, 5 is the for the percentage, while the last two digits divided by 100 is 0 0.20. 0 0.20 is the percentage of the carbon. The last two digit is the percentage of the carbon. In addition to the numerals, AISI specifications may include a letter prefix to indicate the manufacturing process employed in producing uh, the steel. Uh, in uh, A table will be provided uh, to the students. In the table, we will come uh, we will face some numbers with some letters. This letter spe specifies the method of for the The basic numbers for the four digit series of the various grades of carbon and alloy steels with approximate percentages of identifying elements are 10XX, it is a basic open hearth and acid bismuth carbon steel 11xx basic open hearth and acid bismuth carbon steel high sulfur low phosphorus these are some standards the 132325 2 is for the nickel 5 is the 5 uh, percentage 31 uh, is uh, again nickel 1.25 Chromium is 0 0.60. These are the some uh, name uh, the identification for the, the first two digits of the uh, steel or alloy steel. Some representative standard steel specifications are given for plain carbon and free machining steels in table 7.3 uh, 7 and for allying element steel in table table 7.4 in this table the AISI number is given these are the AISI number percentage of carbon is also given mentioned similarly percentage of manganese is also mentioned percentage of phosphorus percentage of sulfur and uh, SAE number is also mentioned so we can identify steel by any SAE number and we can identify the composition of our allying elements against that specific SAE number. Suppose if you want to know about the composition of our SAE number 1055, we will come to know that uh, the carbon is between 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 percent this is the manganese percentage while phosphorus is this much percent sulfur is this much percent some uh, representative alloy steel specifications we can also uh, recognize or identify uh, any steel specification with respect to AISI number we can identify with respect to carbon percentage, manganese percentage and uh, nickel, chromium, melbodinum, vanadium, SAE number 
if they are present suppose for a i s i number one three four zero the uh, there is no nickel chromium molybdenum and vanadium are present Another example if any letter is appear with the specification number suppose E9310 so uh, this is one of the higher nickel chromium molybdenum steel and uh, specifications are also given but the E what is the meaning of E? E is a uh, basic electric furnace uh, process the manufacturing process is mentioned for the letter if any letter is a uh, uh, if any letter is present with the uh, any aisi number 